Number 34, Basilisk lizards can run across the top of a water surface. With each step, a lizard first slaps its foot against the water and then pushes it down into the water rapidly enough to form an air cavity around the top of the foot to avoid having to pull the foot back up against water drag in order to complete the, the step, the lizard withdraws the foot before water can flow into the air cavity. If the lizard is not to sink, the average upward impulse on the lizard during the, this full action of slap, downward push and withdraw must match the downward impulse due to the gravitational force. Suppose the, uh, suppose the mass of the basilisk lizard is 90 grams, the mass of each foot is 3 grams, the speed of a foot as it slaps the water is 1.5 meters per second, and the time for a single step is 0.6 second. Letter A, what is the magnitude of the impulse on the lizard during the slap? Assume this impulse is directly upward. Letter B, during the 0.6 seconds duration, of a step, what is the downward impulse on the lizard due to the gravitational force? Let us see which action, the slap or the push, provides the primary support for the lizard, or are they approximately equal in their support? Okay, so the main thing that we have to notice here is that we have three different movements, and we only, only care about the first two. So this is the water over here. And this is the foot of the lizard, so that's the best draw that I can can ha I can, can make. So initially we have an initial speed like this, and then the foot goes towards the water, hits the water, and then stops. So the final speed is equal to zero. So this is the first movement. This is the slap. The second movement happens when the foot is already touching the water, and it pushes. The water down so and we don't have an, any information about this movement so we cannot make any calculations so this is the second movement and the third movement is when the lizard pulls its foot upwards so this is the slap this is the push and this is the withdraw okay so this is what happening here so for letter A, we want to calculate the magnitude of the slap, right? Magnitude of the impulse of the slap. Let's remember that one way to calculate the impulse is doing the change in the linear momentum, which is equal to the final momentum, sorry, let me make another step here. The final momentum minus the initial momentum which is equal to mass times the final speed minus the initial speed. So the impulse is equal to mass VF minus VI. However, in this case, we just want the average, the magnitude. So I'm going to apply the magnitude over here. So in our case, this is going to be the mass, which is the mass of the foot and not the mass of the lizard because the lizard is kind of uh, st steady here. It's just moving to the right of, or to the left, but it's not moving upwards and downwards. So the part of the lizard that moves is its foot. So that's the, the mass of the foot, which is equal to three times 10 to the minus three kilograms. The final speed of the foot is zero, right? So this goes away. And we have the initial speed of the foot, which is 1.5 meters per second. So this gives us, let's see, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3 newton seconds. So what happened to the minus sign here? I took the absolute value, so uh, that's why it becomes positive. So that's the answer of letter A. For letter B, I want to know the impulse during the time of, during the duration of a, a step. So I want to know the impulse due to the gravitational force. Okay, so the, uh, the force of gravity is constant. So the impulse can be calculated by using the average force, which is the gravitational force, which is constant. This will work because the gravitational force is constant. So this is going to be the mass of the lizard this time, not the foot, the lizard, because the gravity acts 
on the whole body of the lizard times the acceleration of gravity times delta t. So the mass of the lizard is 90 times 10 to the minus 3, the gravity is 9.8 and delta t is equal to 0 0.6 and this gives us 0 0.529 newton second. Okay, so that's the answer of letter B. For letter C, it asks us which action the slap or the push provides the primary support for the lizard or they are approximately equal in their support. So the thing here is that you have to read it again. So let's see. In order, if the lizard is not to sink, the average upward impulse on the lizard during the full action of slap downward push and withdraw must match the downward impulse due to gravitational force. So we have to compare the impulse from these three movements to this movement, to, to this impulse over here. So this is pushing the, the, the foot downward, so it doesn't help, helps the lizard to stay above the water. So that's not the answer and it's not one of the options here. So it's either this one or this one or they are equal. So to fulfill this statement here, we have to compare this value with this value over here. And let me write this one above that one. So that one is 0 0.0045 newton second. And as you can see, the impulse due to the slap is much smaller than the impulse due to the gravitational force. So the slap itself will not maintain the lizard above the water. So the only other option that I have is this one. So the answer for letter C is the push. So for letter C, the answer is the push because we calculated the impulse due to, due to the slap and its value is much smaller than the impulse from the gravitational force.